We want to take you out next to Southern California, where we're getting an update from officials in a mysterious investigation after six bodies were found in a remote desert in San Bernardino County. Let's listen in here as they release new information next. About six victims of homicide that we found in the northern remote area just north of the city of Atalanto. As a result of that, I want to say thank you for all of your patience. I know we've seen numerous requests as to what really caused that homicide and what information that we had as it related to that homicide. And I want to tell you that from the moment we started this investigation, we started to receive strong leads. And after I was briefed, I was quite confident that we'd be able to get the subjects that were involved in this homicide into custody. And with that, and that's the tireless efforts from our homicide team, from our specialized enforcement detail, and the Victor Valley Station, I'm pleased to announce that the five suspects that you see on this chart to my right were those responsible for this homicide. Before I introduce the sergeant that was in charge of this investigation and led this investigation, we used some human source and technological sources to be able to identify the suspects in this case. I would please ask your patience once again. The DA is currently reviewing the filing for this case, and there may be some questions that we're unable to answer, and we'll let you know what those are. And with that, I'd like to introduce Sergeant Mike Warwick to go through some of the details of this case. Mike. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sergeant Michael Warwick. That's M-I-C-H-A-E-L-W-A-R-R-I-C-K. Can you uh, the microphone closer to you? Thank you. Yes. Is this better? Thank you. All right. Um, I'm a sergeant with the Specialized Investigation Division, Homicide Detail. Um, our Specialized Investigation Division uh, has been working on this around the clock to bring uh, these people to justice and justice for our victims. Um, they were murdered in uh, the remote area uh, north of Atalanto in San Bernardino County. Uh, I appreciate the public and the media's patience uh, with us, uh, which allowed our team to focus our efforts in finding those responsible. I want to remind everyone this is still an active investigation, and we will not be able to disclose all the facts of this case. What I can confirm is on Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024, at approximately 2016 hours, Dispatchers relieved, received a 911 call from a subject who spoke Spanish. The caller told dispatchers he was shot, but he did not know the location he was at, and it appeared the call ended. Dispatchers tracked the phone uh, via latitude and longitude coordinates to a remote area in the unincorporated uh, Atalanto area near Lessing Avenue. Due to the remote location, California Highway Patrol airship assisted our deputies and conducted an ex extensive search. Once overhead the area, uh, officers discovered a crime scene uh, and what appeared to be multiple gunshot wound victims, two vehicles, and uh, one of the vehicles was apparently shot, uh, had multiple guns, gunshot strikes in it. Uh, the two vehicles were a Dodge Caravan and a Chevy Trailblazer. At approximately 2040 hours, deputies from the Victor Valley Station arrived on scene and located four deceased males with severe burns, a fifth deceased male was located in the Chevy Trailblazer, and a sixth deceased male uh, a short distance away uh, who sustained a gunshot wound. Our sheriff's homicide investigators assumed the investigation to process the scene and find those responsible for these heinous acts of violence. I can confirm four of the six victims have been identified. Uh, the name of the fourth victim is still being withheld pending next of kin notification. Uh, victim number one is Baldemar Mondragon Albaran, a 34-year-old uh, resident of Atalanto. Victim number two, Franklin Noel Bonilla, 22-year-old Hispanic male, male adult from Hesperia. Victim number three, Kevin Darial Bonilla, 25-year-old Hispanic male adult, uh, resident of Hesperia. Victim number four was a 45-year-old Hispanic male adult, um, victims five and six have yet to be identified. Um, investigators believe Franklin Bonilla was the subject who called 911 after being shot by the suspects. To give you a timeline, it took us about a day and a half to process the extensive crime scene with six deceased victims, multiple vehicles, and to collect the evidence. 
We also had to work with the Sheriff's Coroner's Division to perform the autopsies on the six victims to determine cause of death. I can confirm all victims had apparent fatal gunshot injuries. Additionally, four of the six were burned at the location by the suspects. As far as the motives, uh, we are confident that this appears to be a dispute over marijuana, which resulted in the murders. Our investigators combed through evidence collected at the scene and followed up on information provided by the community. Through extensive investigation with the assistance of the Sheriff's Narcotics and Specialized Enforcement Divisions, on Sunday, January 28, 2023, we were able to serve multiple search warrants in the town of Apple Valley, Atalanto, and the Los Angeles County area of Pinion Hills. We arrested five suspects involved in the murder of the six victims. The suspects are identified as Toniel Baez Duarte, age 34, a resident of Apple Valley, Mateo Baez Duarte, age 24, resident of Apple Valley, Jose Nicolas Hernandez Sarabia, age 33, resident of Atalanto, Jose Gregorio Hernandez Sarabia, age 34, resident of Atalanto, Jose Manuel Burgos Para, uh, age 26, resident of Atalanto. Our detectives recovered evidence, uh, including eight firearms. Our scientific Scientific Investigations Division will forensically process the evidence and determine if any of those firearms were the firearms used in our murders. Um, we are still conducting follow-up investigation, but we are confident we have arrested all the subject, all the suspects in this case. They are currently in custody with no bail, pending a review of the case from the San Bernardino County District Attorney's Office. I'm proud of the work. Uh, I'm proud of the work my team did. Uh, they spent sleepless hours bringing justice to the family, victim, and their families. I can now take some questions. Yeah. Um, to the first question, obviously it's an open investigation. There's a lot going on. Um, there's certain things at the scene that show a, a level of violence that obviously raises some interesting questions for us. But at this point in the investigation, we can't comment on if we believe this is cartel related or not. Um, and to the second question. Um, Elaborate a little more on, on the marijuana. Was it from an illegal grow? Was Um, uh, Emily, I'll, I'll grab that one. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of backup and talk a little bit about the region and what we've experienced out there in that region. So, <clears throat> and, and one thing that hasn't been mentioned yet, we need to remember that even looks like maybe the victims might have been involved in some level of criminal activity in this. We still need to always acknowledge the human perspective of this, and there are true victims in this. And as a result of what's going on in that area, to answer your question, in the last year, our marijuana enforcement teams they served a total of 411 search warrant for illegal marijuana grows. And this is, we're just talking a 365 day period. Um, discovered 14 honey oil labs, recovered 655,000 marijuana plants, 74,000 pounds of processed marijuana, and $370 million. During that period of time, our team served 11 search warrants in the immediate area where the murders took place. And they served approximately 40 search warrants to the west of that area that we call the Shadow Mountain area. So this is an area known for illicit marijuana. Does that help you a little bit? Okay. Any other questions? Illicit marijuana growers. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And this was related to an illicit marijuana grow? It, uh, for all intents and purposes, it looks like illicit marijuana was the driving force behind these murders. And that's all we really know at this point. And I, I think we need to acknowledge really, you know, why we're here and why are we talking about illicit marijuana? And as you said, this is legal in the state of California. The reality is, is Proposition 64 in the fine print took illicit marijuana and moved it from a felony to a misdemeanor. And the reality of this is, is by allowing that, we've unre unleashed a plague in this California. And the plague is the black market of marijuana and certainly cartel activity and a number of victims that are out there. And it's certainly my hope. I'm seeing a number of legislators change Prop 47 and some things we're concerned about. I hope they take the same view of Prop 64 and change this so they give law enforcement a fighting chance to put some teeth into this law and to take back 
and prevent a number of these homicides and other things that we see occurring. If we don't fix that, we're going to continue to do this. I gave you stats for just the past year, but prior to that, thousands of marijuana grows that we've taken out in partnership with the Bureau of Cannabis Control, with partnership with our other state partners and federal partners. But right now, folks, we have gotten a much better control over this. But it's, it's interesting. I just read a, an article that was produced back in 2020 in Cal Matters and what the supporters were saying about Prop 64. And it said it would bring the state's booming, unregulated recreational marijuana under the rule of law and protect consumers in the environment. And it's recognition of decades of prohibition against aggressive informant, uh, enforcement and criminal laws that don't work. That's false, 100%. Our environment, we prize our environment in this state. You go look at our deserts. It's hoop house trash that's left over. A very small water source that's available to the public has been tapped into. Look at that's this law through the lens of this case and all the statistics that I gave you. And then please research the other counties across the state of California. They have the exact same problems. We need to prevent these types of senseless murders from happening, and we can do it. We have it in our power. We just need to make an adjustment. The police are not going after people who are smoking marijuana recreationally. It's illicit marijuana, and everything that Prop 64 was promised may possibly occur if we could just simply make that adjustment and change the way that we handle illicit marijuana in this state. Rob? Rob, yes, it is. And look, based on our training experience, all of you hired experts that have also been talking about this case until we got to this point of the press conference. Based on our training and experience, we believe a lot of these things are occurring that are maybe related to much bigger things going on. The reality is, is factually at this point of the case, I can't tell you that. But it certainly looks um, like it has a lot of the, the modeling of cartel cases and things of that nature. Mike, can you answer that, please? Yes, uh, we can say at this point that that was. Sheriff? I know there was another question. Brian, go ahead. Yeah. Did this appear to be a, a scheduled meetup? And if so, what was supposed to happen? Or, or does this look more like an ambush? Brian, maybe all of the above, based on evidence we're looking at. But again, once the DA's office reviews this, and it's certainly my hope after we get through the preliminary um, hearing and a number of things, we'll be able to give it uh, a little bit more information to the group with specificity. Did the victims get off any shots? That I'm not sure of. Do we know, Mike? I, I don't think we're comfortable speaking to that at this point in the investigation. Okay. Sure. Sure. Are these legal U.S. citizens? So a couple of the people that we identified in terms of the, the victims may be... Um, nationally from Honduras. We're not able to, we're working with the consulate right now to make that determination. We're not sure. A follow-up to Emily's question. Um, so you serve search warrants in, in those multiple locations. Is it accurate to say that those search warrants were, were issued by the Honduran consulate and not the Mexican consulate? Um, the suspects were uh, arrested on, a, I would describe it as a compound. It was close to uh, a grow that was being formed but wasn't active yet. Um, a lot of the, the areas that we were dealing with were adjacent to marijuana grows, but the search warrants themselves, none of them were hit at a grow site. Can you say any of those suspects have prior criminal activity or anything on the record? Um, not at this point in the investigation. We're you still working just through all that. Five? You think it's just five or are there more? I believe the five that we have are the five responsible for the crime. I don't think there's anybody else who we would say is responsible for the crime out there. As best you can, the, the, you immediately got leads. What, what were these leads and what was the motivation from, from whoever was, was calling you down? I would love to be able to speak to that, but really that's definitely part of the investigation that the DA is going to have to review and that's part of the, the ultimate adjudication of this that we need when it's really, we can't release that type of information right now. So I, I, just speaking to San Bernardino County, now obviously anytime you have mass, six people 
um, that are murdered. I mean, that's shocking to your conscience, let's be honest. But I can tell you that since we've been investigating illegal marijuana grows, a number of body dumps and things have been related to this across our county. And to give you an exact number, I'm sorry I don't have that, but it isn't an anomaly. The anomaly here is the amount of people that were murdered, of course. And, and this is a problem. And this is a problem that's not really being talked about. Uh, could you say, give me, uh, maybe murders have doubled or, or up by 30 Do you know how many more cases? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. How many more cases you guys are having before? I don't even know if we'd be able to give you a, per, a percentage of that. I can just tell you that there have been a number of mar illegal, illicit marijuana grows that have been found as a result of recovering a dead body in this county. To include those cases when I talk about all the thousands of grows that we've taken down in the last two years. Um, it's certainly a significant problem. It's one that we've wrapped our heads around. We figured that the best way to take this is really take the money out of it. So we're talking about getting code enforcement involved, attacking you know, the, the property aspects of this, who's in care and control of the property, and trying to take some of the profits out of this to really get control of it. And we've, we've, we've taken thousands of grows down to hundreds in this county. And it's certainly been significant, a significant amount of impact on us as law enforcement and a significant impact on the taxpayers. Folks, listen, thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and conclude the press conference. We appreciate um, all of your attention to this. I appreciate your coverage of this. And I apologize about, you know, Brian, about some of the lack of information we're just not able to put out right now. But I can guarantee you we got the five right people, and we're going to make sure this is a strong case and work very closely with the DA to bring them to justice. Thank you for your time. Wait, wait, one more question. I'm sorry, one more question. Could they be related to any of the murders? We'll talk about that. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you just watched there, law enforcement officials in San Bernardino County, California, uh, update all of us on this story we brought you uh, late last week uh, that six bodies were found in this remote area of the California desert. Let's put their photos up right now. Uh, you can see it here uh, on this tweet there from Fox 11 in Los Angeles with a screenshot of the Five individuals who were arrested there, arrests being made uh, after those six bodies were found in that remote desert area near the San Bernardino County community of El Mirage. Uh, so last week, deputies found the bodies of six people at a remote dirt crossroads in the Mojave Desert. The deputies were responding to a request for a wellness check when they reached the area off Highway 395 outside El Mirage around 8.15 p.m. local time January the 23rd, and found five of the bodies. The sixth was found the following morning. So uh, this apparently coming over a dispute when it comes to illicit marijuana grows there in the region. Of course, the use of marijuana is legal in the state of California. And you heard there from the chief and the detective there updating us on this story uh, that parts of this industry have gone underground. They referred to it as black market, and that is what they uh, kind of concluded was the whole reason, the whole motive in these murders. And now these five individuals before you arrested in connection with the deaths of these six people. Uh, and law enforcement, you heard there, uh, they're not looking for anyone else. They believe these are the five individuals responsible. So if there are any more updates uh, on this story, including from our friends there at Fox 11 in Los Angeles, we'll make sure to bring it to you.